the law of God is a most pure and natural law, and everything else must be measured by that standard. Hi folks, I hope this video is finding you well, and today I am inspired by certain glands to speak to law, both God's law as well as man's law, and the latter is that which appears to be lacking, and the reason mankind's law is found short of any righteous standard is because Satan is the author of that which is most deficient, and here is a perfect example. The book says in Luke chapter 12 and verse 48, in part, for unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. Again, for unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. Folks let's put that in a frame that is a little easier to look at, digest and understand. Question, do you know what the income tax rate is for a billionaire? Well according to a 2021 White House study, the wealthiest 400 billionaire families in the US paid an average federal tax rate of just 8.2%. Here is my contention, since the Bible says that the guy with more should pay more, Uncle Samantha says that she disagrees with the noise of those arrows, and the billionaire should pay less of what they have, and here is the kicker, the average Joe pays an income tax rate of 11.4%, and that is why we find ourselves broke, while having to borrow from our enemies which is insane, and that is not only skating on thin ice, but it's edging certain criminality, is it not? My friends who in their right mind borrows fake money from their enemy, and are we really broke, or is that just more hogwash coming from those at odds with the people, it's really hard to tell these days, isn't it? Folks it is clear that to what God says, mankind says the opposite, and here is another example, the poor of this world are God-fearing with faith not lacking, in fact, their faith is in abundance, while on the other hand, the rich could give a rat's patootie about God and his love, and neither in his doctrine nor his benevolence are they interested. Let's read what James wrote concerning the same, and my friends Ta Biblia speaks volumes to the poor. James chapter 2 and verse 5. Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? My friends we must hear that again, hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith, and to that I say Amen and Amen, folks we may be poor in folding money, but we as God's children are so rich in faith, are we not? Since we're here, did you catch that folks? Well, for those of you always two steps ahead of me, you're right, the poor in earth are the chosen of the Almighty. Again, hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith, my friends the poor in earth are the chosen, and we were chosen by our Father God Almighty, on more than one account. Folks another word for chosen is called, and were we not called forth by God the Father to represent his will in earth, oh yes we were. Romans chapter 8 and verses 28 through 30. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate, to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. My so beloved familiars here, are you beginning to feel a little more special right about now? Yea we are those whom were chosen, called, and foreknown by God Almighty, as we are the predestined, the justified, and the glorified by the only one true living God, yea the Most High Yahweh, Amen, and that is why we have always felt separate from the others in earth, all of our lives, since we can remember. My friends were we not commanded to be separate from the world, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17. Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, I ask you my so beloved adjacents here, is money your master, I mean whom is it that you serve? Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one, and love the other, or else he will hold to the one, and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Ephesians chapter 1 and verses 4 and 5. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, 
that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. My friends there is a word here that we must look at, in the latter of those two verses, as to establish certain definition and understanding, and that word is adoption, and folks it's not the same as what we understand adoption to be today, by our standards. Adoption, in this context and realm is Strong's word number G5206, with the G denoting a Greek word, and the Greek word for adoption is a and is pronounced weathesia, and means the placing as a son, and does not mean taking a heathen and making that heathen, a child of God by an adoption, as we know adoption to be today, under our laws, but instead it is that relationship which God was pleased to establish between himself and the Israelites in preference to all other nations, and folks that does not qualify as an inclusion, but just the opposite, it is certain exclusion, as God does not want any mixing whatsoever, with the heathen in earth, so what is a heathen you may ask? My friends heathen is Strong's word number H1471, with the H denoting a Hebrew word, and the Hebrew word for heathen is a word minus vowels, and the Hebraic word for heathen is the three consonant word ieb, pronounced go ee, and means a foreign nation, and means Gentile, also non-Israelite people, heathen, those not of God, and please don't get me wrong, they were created by God Almighty, but they are in no way otherwise related to our Father, as we are reminded here, in John chapter 1 and verse 3. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In addition, Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16. For by him were all things created, that are in heaven, and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, or dominions, or principalities, or powers, all things were created by him, and for him. And here is more, Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Yes my brothers and sisters of the family Yahweh, we were called according to his purpose, so I ask you, what is our father's purpose? 1 Kings chapter 5 and verse 5. And, behold, I purpose to build an house unto the name of the Lord my God, as the Lord spake unto David my father, saying, Thy son, whom I will set upon thy throne in thy room, he shall build an house unto my name. My friends first and foremost our father's purpose was to have a house built for him, and please know ye this, we are that house, as we are the house of the Lord, Amen, yea we are Jacob, we are Zion, and lest we forget, we are his kingdom in earth, and we are God's chosen, we poor of the world are the called, as well we are called after his name, and I ask you, is it not written in the Chronicles? 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Yea we must humble ourselves before our king, we must pray, seek his face, and turn from the ways that are wicked, as his people, and he said that he would hear us from heaven, and heal our land, and now is the season, for to everything there is a season, and our season is now, as Satan's season is short, Amen. My friends has Babylon ever found favor with our father? Nay, never. Jeremiah chapter 51 and verse 29. And the land shall tremble and sorrow, for every purpose of the Lord shall be performed against Babylon, to make the land of Babylon a desolation without an inhabitant. Folks I ask you, what is the spiritual meaning of Babylon? Although the name Babylon is derived from the Akkadian word, Babylo, meaning gate of God, it is an evident counterfeit of God's eternal city. The opposition to the rule of God, by world powers, or the exile of God's people from the land of blessing, is conveyed properly through the metaphor of Babylon. That verse in Jeremiah speaks to Babylon becoming a desolation without an inhabitant, and that did happen, as Babylon was destroyed in 539, before common era, meaning before the time of Christ, 
and we know through study that Babylon was one of the cities founded by King Nimrod, Genesis chapter 10 and verses 9 through 10. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord, wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, and Erech, and Akkad, and Kalneh, in the land of Shinar. Babylon was located in Shinar, in ancient Mesopotamia on the eastern bank of the Euphrates River. Moving on at a manageable clip, concerning certain purpose, Acts chapter 26 and verse 16. But rise, and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee. Folks this verse speaks to Paul, called Saul at the time, whom fell to the earth and was blinded by the Son of Man, and when Saul asked who it was that did this thing, Jesus answered, in the earlier verse 15, and I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. My friends God's purpose, through his son Jesus was to change the ways of Saul, and Paul became a minister for our Lord God Almighty, and walked side by side with the Son in the way, Amen. Yea Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Again I ask you, what is God's purpose in earth? My so beloved familiars here, we are God's purpose, as indeed we are his proposition, as well we are his statement, or assertion, that expresses his will, his judgment, and his opinion. Romans chapter 9 and verse 11. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. My friends please know that we are called by the grace and glory of God Almighty for to carry his banner forth, to defend and shield his house. I ask you my brothers and sisters, are not our yeas to be yea, and our nays to be nay, oh yes they are, and we shall not hold our peace, nor shall we hold our tongue, as to be silenced by those without an ear, for we have a message. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 17. When I therefore was thus minded, did I use lightness? Or the things that I purpose, do I purpose according to the flesh, that with me there should be yea yea, and nay nay? In closing folks, we as his children are God's purpose in earth, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 9. Who hath saved us, and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, and as I've said so many times before, before the world was, we were, and we were with our Father, as the Bible says that by him we were foreknown, and as we head for the door, we were given certain cause in the womb, told us in Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Yes my friends we have purpose, and we must seek the face of our Father as to be acknowledged, and on that note, seek him out, ask for him to walk with you in the way, and with that, be well, stay strong, and I thank you so much for listening my friends.